Okay, so uh, this morning Petra presents you different uh, clinical applications uh, using TBB, and I will present you one of these cases uh, with the epilepsy. So I will start with a very few uh, general slides just to introduce uh, epileptic seizures and epilepsy. Uh, so an epileptic seizure, it's a brief period of uh, sign and all uh, symptoms um, like alteration in behavior, uh, sensation or uh, loss of consciousness due to abnormal uh, electrical discharge in the brain. So you can see such uh, an example here on the, uh, in A it's a, a seizure recording in a wool hippocampus of the mouse and on the left it's uh, spontaneous uh, seizure in a human for epileptic patients. Uh, so these epileptic seizures are characterized by two generic patterns. So there is uh, the fast uh, discharges and the spike in waves. So uh, you can see the, so there is the onset where you have these preictal spikes. Then you have the seizure uh, starting. You have an alteration, uh, various sequence of these, spi these spikes uh, and this uh, fast discharges and after you have uh, the end of the seizures. Uh, so these epileptic seizures, uh, as you see, um, are in invariant um, patterns across spaces, but also across uh, regions. So if uh, an epileptic seizure is just one single event, uh, the epilepsy is a disease of this recurrence um, of these unprovoked and spontaneous epileptic seizures. So just uh, some uh, numbers. One person of the human population has suffered from epilepsy. Uh, in this one person, uh, a third uh, are, um, yes, are drug resistance. So they are not responding to the medications despite the introduction of uh, new drugs since uh, 50 years. And so their only hope from relief is the surgery, which consists in the removal or disconnections of the most epileptogenic regions. Uh, I will just show you a short video of one of our epileptic patients in Marseille. There is no. We don't. So the seizure will start. So it is an epileptic patient uh, in Marseille. Yeah, this after surgery. Uh, yes. So you see the cap yeah. here. So there is a stereotactic uh, yeah. electrode implanted in the brain. That was a seizure. Yes. And what? That's, that's a real seizure. Yeah. No, no. She has actually no real seizures, but she ha she's an epileptic patient, yeah. and. Um, when the definitions, when they don't, uh, they want to refine the zone to resect, and there is some still some doubt, uh, they go to the surgery and implant this uh, stereotactic electrode to refine this zone to resect. Yeah. And generally, the patients uh, stay two weeks uh, at the hospital, and they are monitored 24 hours on 24. She's 
So what you so what you see is a sequence of um, um, semiolo what we call the semiology, so the different um, alteration in the behavior. So uh, she she laughs, she sings, she crosses the legs, and and at the end you earn the nurse who try to interact uh, with the patient to see the level of consciousness. Uh, here. Um, so as you say, um, this is the, on the top, it's a pre-operative uh, plan of the implantation of the electrodes. And uh, on the bottom you have, here is uh, the reconstruction with the virtual brain. So um, we are actually able to, um, using the coordinates of the electrodes, to place them on, the, on all virtual brain. And um, yeah. And here is a post-operative MRI of the patient when she had the electrode inside. But uh, what is important, it's uh, this because it's the SEEG, uh, the corresponding SEEG correlates of the seizure you just have saw. So actually the seizure starts here in the uh, prefrontal area. And then uh, it's sprayed and recruit other regions. Uh, the cingulate regions and the uh, premotor cortex. and also the temporal pole. And after a certain time it stops and focus on these uh, regions. Mm -hmm. So it's for that when there is this, um, so the seizure starts and you have this propagation in the other area, uh, in particular the premotor cortex, and it's when she starts to have this alteration in the behavior. So the point is, um, is not uh, when we talk about um, the epilepsy, is not just a focus. So it's not just one region in the brain uh, where start the seizures. It's also the early propagation that after there is, after a certain period, there is a propagation to uh, to a large scale level. And it's here where the virtual brain is useful. Uh, so yes, we divide the brain in. Uh, different uh, parcellations. Uh, for the epileptic patient, we use uh, 90 regions. And the goal is to uh, refine uh, the network. So uh, the, the clinician first uh, on the non-invasive recording is just, they estimate, but visually. And when they go to until the surgery, they use like some analysis tool uh, of the SEEG. <coughs> But when you're going to the, as show you Petra this morning, uh, there are some patients who are seizure free, but other it becomes worse. And what we want is to test the clinic with the virtual brain. We can test the clinical hypothesis. We can uh, remove the, the 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 regions the surgeon want to remove and see and re-simulate after and see if the patient is seizure free or not. So we can test. We can test, place the electrode where we want. We can do what we, what we want. Sorry. Yes. Why were 90 chosen? Sorry. So why were um, I guess 90 uh, different regions chosen? Um. I thought they were using a more fine, refined uh, parcellation, but uh, it's according to the clinicians. Yes. Uh, so here, it's just uh, not only for epileptic patients, but it's general the, uh, the workflow uh, to, to modelize an individual subject. So first, uh, from the non-invasive imaging, so from the MRI scans and the DTI, we can reconstruct the anatomy of the brain. 
it's what we call the brain avatar. Once we have this, um, this brain, we will have to choose uh, which uh, functional connectivity, which activity of the brain we want to simulate. So depending on the, and also depending on the, of the disease or depending also of the uh, complexity uh, we want to introduce in the model, there are different uh, configuration possible. And uh, after we have our virtual, individualized virtual brain. And from here, uh, we can uh, either uh, continue simulation and optimize the parameters or going uh, uh, further and uh, use the SEEG. Um, so either we use the hypothesis of the clinicians and we try uh, to reproduce what they saw or we can go further and use only the SEEG without the hypothesis. And the goal will be to uh, to, to use this tool as a um, pre-surgical uh, analysis. Yes? Um, for the pipelines, is there a specific uh, procedure you have to do? So do you have to do specific pre-processing steps? Or can you um, change? Or is there a given pipeline you have to do for um, processing your fMRI data? Uh, for the... Um, for the epileptic patient, we are not looking the... We are more looking the SEEG, but there is a, a pipeline uh, that we took this morning. We combine the usual tools. Uh, it's just that the output will be adapted to TVB. I will just come back to, to the pipeline, just a few. Uh, so um, I will show you the goal. It will be to show you how to build a virtual epileptic patient step by step. So here is just an example, but after we will use, um, you will do some uh, programmations to simulate epilepsy. So here it's uh, a patient uh, also from Marseille who has um, B-temporal lobe epilepsy. So on the top you have the, the plan of the preoperative uh, uh, placement of the SEEG electrodes. So the, the red one, red circles, uh, means there is two electrodes in the um, right hemisphere and all the other, it's in the left hemisphere. So at the beginning, the, clinic, the, surge, uh, the clinician thought uh, that the epi epileptogenic zone was, was in the right, uh, left hemisphere, but they place also two in the right hemisphere. So we will see. Uh, here you have the MRI scan after uh, the implantation of the electrodes. And here are the um, SEEG data of the patients. So she has two types of uh, epileptic seizures. Either on the top, the seizures start in the right hemisphere. So actually where we have only two electrodes. And, stays, and stay here. It's what we call a simple seizure. But she has also some complex seizure. So again, the seizure starts in the right hemisphere, but this time it's propagate to the left hemisphere. And she has like what we call a generalized epilepsy. And the last, uh, in the bottom panel, it's uh, when we stimulate. So we stimulate in the left uh, hemisphere, and we see that uh, we have these propagations. So we have also uh, a focus in this area. So what we want with TVB is to reproduce the activity of the patients. Just a little reminder for the um, neural mass model. So to, uh, we, the equations. So we have the local activity of a node, so of a brain regions. And we will uh, add to this, to, to its activity, the interactions with the others, uh, with its remote uh, nightboard. And it's what we call global dynamics. And if we want to, and for example, this patient has a, a lesions in the brain, we reconstruct, uh, we had these lesions in our parcellation, in, in the virtual brain, and we want to see also, so it's a, additional information and we want to know 
um, the influence of these uh, lesions on the connectivity also, if it influences the epilepsy. And so we, uh, by reconstructions, we are going uh, to look on, on the very local, so on the surface level, uh, its connectivity and its the local dynamics. But generally we use them, except for the epileptic patient, but in the other case, we use only the region's uh, simulations. We, but for the surface, it's if it's at the region level, we have only uh, 90 regions. When we go to the surface, we have more than 10,000 or 1,000 nodes. So it's very uh, expensive computationally. So it really depends of the, of the case and the level of complexity. So the main component of uh, the virtual brain it's to load in the, so the, the structural uh, data of the, of the patients. And as I say, she has uh, a lesion, in particular hypothalamic abatoma, so it's a neural, uh, neural mass attached to the uh, hypothalamus, so in uh, violet. And so to reconstruct uh, this brain, we have a pipeline that is available on our, on our uh, GitHub account. And just the main step, it's from the, uh, the T1 images and the tractography. So we need these two components. We will uh, define, so we will divide the brain in different um, brain regions and use the DTI uh, to link the brain regions together. And we have the, some output files. Sorry, can I just? Yep. And with our um, pipeline tool, we have the direct. We can get the direct output to implement in TVB. So just the main step to uh, uh, to know is that from uh, the T1, we reconstruct the surface, so the cortical regions, subcortical regions, and uh, the volumetric parcellations. And from the DTI, we have. Uh, the, the connection between each regions. And we get two matrices. One, it's uh, the, sorry, the weight matrices, so uh, the strength of the connection between uh, two different regions. And we get also the track length, so the distance between two regions. And uh, this matrix allows us to, uh, to compute the time delays uh, in our activity. Okay, and the second, the second and a more important component is uh, the functional reconstruction of a brain model. Uh, so, um, again, depending of what you, you want to simulate, it exists a plethora of uh, computational models. But uh, to just focus on epilepsy, uh, there is one particular model what, that we, we use and it is um, built on two uh, main components, two generic patterns. Just to remind, so I will just focus on these uh, seizures. So this is a um, seizure recording in the uh, wool hippocampus of a rat. And so to build our model, we will focus on the onset, uh, the time se so the in the time series we have this uh, various sequence of fast discharges and uh, spike wave events, and we have the offset. And um, just to, I will not go into details, uh, but just to link with the presentation of uh, this morning with Andreas. Um, so. The seizures, we have this, um, this alternation of uh, quiescent state and uh, these fast discharges. And it's what we call bursters. And these bursters, um, we can classify uh, depending on the onset, 
So the, the type of bifurcation at the onset and the type of bifurcation at the offset. And the epileptor is built, uh, or I can say that 80% of the epileptic seizures um, have a certain type of uh, onset, offset bifurcation. It is a onset, it's a saldol node bifurcations. And the offset is the homoclinic. And we will use um, this as building block to define our equations. So it's based on the existing model, but we will combine uh, to have these two generic patterns. So just the first populations reproduce the fast discharges, so the bursters. Uh, the second populations, which is another type of bifurcations, reproduce these spike and wave events, these excitable systems. And we have also a slow variables. Ah, sorry. Okay. And this slow variable uh, allows us to switch between a rest state, what we call intellectual states, and the ictal during the seizures. So this, um, this variable allows us to uh, remember in the phase space, we have the existence of uh, resting states, so fixed points, and we have also, uh, in the other part of the phase space, of a limit cycle. And this slow variable, uh, slow variable allows us to jump, to go back and forth uh, of this limit cycle who rep represent the seizures. Okay, uh, so uh, this model epileptor, it's a completely uh, phenomenological model. So there is no, uh, is not representing a biophysical properties, but just the behavior of the whole system, like here, the combinations uh, of the state variable X2 and X1 represent the behavior of these seizures here. So we have the spikes. We have this uh, DC shift that we observe uh, in the recordings of the seizures. The alteration of fast discharges and the spike and wave. And we have the offset of the seizures by a DC shift. So in this model, there is one particular parameter that is important. It is X0, which is the excitability of a brain region. So the ability of a region to trigger seizure or not. So we can build uh, our brain network and define and, uh, and have an heterogeneous uh, brain. So some regions are able to trigger seizures and others are just LC regions. And to have this brain networks, we need to have this interaction between uh, the different regions. And uh, it appears in here. So CIG is the weight of the structural connectivity. And it appears in the slow variables. Why? Because we can put this connectivity, uh, we can couple uh, the regions and the system on different level, but here it was put on the slow variable because it's in particular this allows us to have uh, these uh, propagations as we observe in the real data. So starting in one region and, pro and recruiting and propagating to other brain areas. Okay. And we can include the clinical hypothesis in our model. So for example, for these patients, uh, the clinician saw, so as it was, um, if you remember, um, for the simple seizures and the complex seizures, the seizures start in the uh, right hemisphere, in the right hippocampus. So they put an excitability value, so an X0, uh, very high. So below this, just um, below uh, the, um, the bifurcations. 
No. It's above. Minus two. Uh, minus. No, above. I'm stupid. Above the bifurcations. And we said that when we have in a, in a network, we have this value x0 and add 0, 4 to be very excitable and trigger seizures autonomously. But we have also, when we have the stimulation, we see that we have this, uh, this propagation in the left hemisphere. And they put other regions, like the left hippocampus, hypothalamus, uh, has um, also um, epileptogenic regions. And we have the propagations, like the brainstem, and the parahippocampal, um, thalamus, and temporal pole, which have a, um, a smaller uh, excitability value. And all the other regions are in rest, so far from the bifurcations. Okay, so once we have our uh, three main parameters, we can just run TVB. And the direct output uh, of TVB is the neuronal activity. So depending of, the, of your model, it can be uh, local fin potential or firing rate or synaptic activity. For epileptor, the local fin, uh, it was built to resemble to the uh, local fin potential. Uh, from this neuronal activity, we can compute uh, EEG, SEEG, also MEG or fMRI. And here are the, um, the simulation of these patients. So simulation after optimization of some parameters like the X0, like also for the cooking, and also after uh, data sheeting. And what we see is that with TBB, we are able to reproduce the simple seizures of the patients, uh, starting in the uh, right hippocampus, uh, channel B2. We are able to reproduce the complex uh, seizure, so starting in the right hemisphere and propagating to the left hemisphere, and also uh, to reproduce the, stimu uh, the stimuli patterns. Okay. Now we will do the simulations. So can you go back to the notebook, IPython notebook? You can take the, um, the same Python notebook that you start, maybe. So normally you already have uh, load uh, the package uh, PyLab and bag for the displaying. You already have also import some uh, the uh, simulator, uh, TV simulator lab. So you already import some functions. We will need these two others. It's okay, or do you need a bigger? Uh. And we will need the uh, package NumPy. Just forget the OS, and we can import also. Uh, the package time, just to compute the time that uh, will last our simulations.
It's okay? So, uh, here, uh, so you see in the graphical interface, we have this uh, uh, face space where we have the, uh, the possibility to, modi to see how the system behaves depending on some uh, parameters. So we can actually uh, do the same here. Ah. Uh, So you can call these functions here. From tvb.simulator.plot.faceplane interactive. Import faceplane interactive. <coughs> Then we call the model, epileptor. And we define our face plane with this model. And if you launch the face plane, you get this. Yeah. Uh, wait. Okay. Like this. And has in the graphical interface, if you click on any points, you will have the trajectory. So if I click here, wait. Oh. So there is, with this configuration of parameters, you have uh, two fixed points. So it's where the null clients uh, cross. So this fix, when we are in these fixed points, close to the fixed points, you see that the trajectory reach No, here we have a stable fixed point. It's here. So the trajectory reaches stable fixed points. And when we are here, we have the limit cycle.
you can do the same, but by introducing some noise in the system. So here, you will define the noise. So here is the time step. We define the integrator. and the strength of the noise. And now when you define your face plane, in head of the model, you also initiate, initialize the integrators. And you can play with the, uh, the strength of the noise to see the different uh, reaction of the systems. Can you show me again where how to set the noise ratio? <laughs> Maybe it's also the end of the integration again. That's what that means. So when we had the noise, the system explore the phase space. Can you go up again for the, yep. the commands? Yes, after the goal is to send, uh, after I will send them the tutorials. Yeah. 
mean, how, how much longer is the tutorial? Uh, what I just wanted is to simulate and uh, that as I don't know, they are talking together or so, I don't know. Can, okay. Okay, so now we will start the simulations. <laughs> so the neuronal, simulate the neuronal activity. Um, so the first things we are doing is to load the to, in, to load the structural connectivity of the patients. So here we will just load uh, the default data set uh, given with TVB. So <coughs> Okay, and uh, in the uh, general equations, we already have the activity of the, um, of the node itself. It's already taken into account, so we don't need uh, this um, connection, this strength of the node within itself. So we can put to zero. So these functions allow us to remove the self-connections. The second one is to normalize the matrix. So we do this if we are comparing different uh, connectum, but also to to have uh, our equations that converge and get results. We can also set uh, the condition velocity of our signals. So here I put here equal to infinity, so we have a direct transmissions, instantaneous transmissions. <coughs> already in the model, you already have the activity of the nodes, so you don't need to add its interaction with itself. So we just uh, remove. And here it's just to visualize uh, the connectivity <laughs> nicely. <laughs> so you don't need to... I will send you later the, the tutorials. Because if we don't have the time to go <laughs> until the simulations, it will be pity. Yes, yeah, so it's for that we. Okay, so that's optional. Yeah, this it's optional. Okay, so. <laughs> Did you load the connectivity? <laughs> okay, I can just do this. So just load the connectum. It's every okay. And this is will the same. I will not. Okay. And here we initialize our model. Okay. 
So here, the variable k s is the coupling strength uh, to scale the structural connectivity. So here we will just put to one to say we want to um, to connect on the slow variables, as I said uh, in the in the slide before. And these uh, variables uh, just slow down the dynamics uh, of the seizures. So to get something more realistic. So the previous one that we did was to just look at uh, basically how the model is performing. Right now we are looking at only the slow dynamics. No, before it was uh, because we can uh, modify the parameters, look what we want by uh, playing with the phase space. Mm -hmm. But now we are uh, we are, uh, we are going to simulate so loading uh, each component. But you can modify these parameters <coughs> on the phase plane and just continue with the model you instantiate before. <coughs> OK. You can load your model. It's OK? And now we will put as a what I call before the clinical hypothesis. So here I'm saying that, oh, just here. So I will simulate uh, in a similar way like the patient before who has uh, a seizure that starts in the right hippocampus and propagates uh, to the left hemisphere. So I'm saying that the right, uh, the right hippocampus, uh, I have also the left, and the uh, wool amygdala will be defined as the epileptogenic zone. And I will define different levels of excitability. So here. The k is it's a uh, global coupling that, that scale uh, the connections, uh, the interaction with the other regions. So from the social connectum, remember you have the local dynamics, so the model itself, and we had the, in the activity the in uh, coming from the interactions uh, with the neighborhood. Here we just say k is equal one to say I put this coupling uh, on the slow variables. If you remember the model, I say that we had the coupling on these slow variables to allow uh, the propagations. So here I just say, uh, because initially it's put to zero, so I just put to one, just to specify I want to be on the uh, slow variables. And later I will specify uh, the level of the coupling. And R, R uh, um, scales, it's the time scale of these uh, slow uh, variables. So uh, the, these slow variables uh, lay the uh, to go uh, the, the system between anterictal and ictal states. And to have like um, a longer enteric, uh, just for example, uh, in real data, we the patient have like one seizure um, for some minute, for one minute, uh, one seizure it's per minute, for example. But here, um, to have something so um, similar, we rescale this value. Okay. So here, I'm creating, or saying to my creating the heterogeneous brain. So I'm saying, okay, I want these regions to be the epileptogenic zone. So where start the seizures? And I put different value of excitability. Okay? 
So the values are above the threshold, above the bifurcation point, so they trigger uh, seizures. And here are my propagation regions. And all the other regions that we can call the non-involved uh, zone are set far from the bifurcations, so in the rest state. So here, 947, it's uh, the positions of the regions in the structural connectome. And I'm saying I want this region to be epileptogenic zone, um, to trigger seizure. So I'm putting uh, its excitability value very high, so above the bifurcations. Here I have two other regions, the para-hippocampal and the temporal pole. Also very excitable but less than the epileptogenic zone. So they are propagate, I define them like the propagation zone. And very far from the bifurcations in the race state, the LC regions. It's okay? Okay. <coughs> so we have the structural, we have, uh, we have built or load the, the brain, so the structural connections. We have defined the activity of each brain regions, and now we will add to the model uh, the coupling between the, the, between the two functions, the two regions, sorry. So here. So it exists different uh, coupling functions. <coughs> the one we are using for epileptor is a different coupling. It just the different activity between the region itself with the remote regions. And the strength of the coupling is this value. What is the error? Um, it says uh, with 
Did you define the... Okay. Okay, do you have to define the number of regions you have, so the first one. So your space is fine, you have uh, 76 regions, I think. At the, be uh, at the beginning, yes, I'm setting that all regions, and then I'm saying, okay, I want these regions to uh, modify. Okay? It's okay for the coupling? Okay. So now we have this, we will integrate for each type or uh, equations. So here we are defining the integration step. N sigma is the strength of the noise. Here I'm defining which kind of noise I'm using because it exists different type of noise, so uh, either additive, multiplicative, or others. And here I'm saying on which state <coughs> variable I'm putting the, the level of the the level of noise for each state variable. So here there is uh, six state variables. So you. Normal, normally, if you remember, I only show you five in the slides. So the first one is x1, y1, the slow variables, and we put the strength of the noise on the second populations. And the last one, um, there is some, in the equations, there is some uh, coupling functions who couple uh, the two population together. And this function was, uh, was set as in a state variables in, a, uh, in TVB. So these five state, uh, these five state variables can be extended to a six state variables. It just acts like a low pass filter. Uh, but we, we don't care for, we just don't care. And here we are choosing uh, the integrator, setting the integration step, and the noise. It's okay. Can we pass to the monitors? So if you remember the direct output uh, of the TVB, it's a neuronal activity. But we can also compute some neuroimaging signals. So it's what we define in the monitors. We select uh, what we want to observe as output. So here, it's a neuronal activity, but I select the temporal average monitor. So we will we'll just average uh, over time.
just to reduce the number of time points. And here, I define the SEEG monitors. So to compute uh, the SEEG uh, activity, from, um, so we have the regions, and uh, these regions is just the center of the uh, volume of the regions. Here we will uh, just project on all the surface to have this all this point on the surface on the vertex. And from the vertex, we will project uh, on the contact of the electrodes. So we need to uh, instantiate so the position of the electrodes. We have a matrix, which is a projections of the surface on the electrode contact. And this um, file just say um, to which uh, regions um, depends uh, the, um, the vertex on the surface. And here we uh, specify the sampling periods. So it is in milliseconds. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they keep the same in the in the demo script. Okay. But yes, usually it's written what we watch. <laughs> <laughs> It's good. So for the SEEG, we specify the positions of the sensor in the 3D space. What we call region mapping it's just a file saying to which regions belongs to a cortical surface. And the file projections, it's a matrix, we project the vertices, so the point on the surface, to the contact electrodes. And we set the time sampling, the sampling periods. And now you're ready to simulate. Mm -hmm. So once we have defined all these components, <laughs> we will put all these components in the simulator. We will tell him, OK, I want to use this model that we defined before, this structural connectum. Uh, the conduction velocity, uh, the coupling, the integrator, and the monitors. Thank 
So in the simulator object, we put all the components together. The model, the connectivity, the conduction velocity, the coupling functions, the integrators, and finally the monitors. And now you can start the simulations. with the function sim.run. So maybe... All, all the other commands are uh, optional, just sim.run. Yes, we can put just only this one. <coughs> You can just write uh, the command that I underline. So you're specifying 
uh, for the uh, temporal uh, average monitors the time and the time uh, the time and the data <coughs> data points and here it for the SEEG This is optional. I just showed the part of that Okay. I cannot. So, uh, in red, uh, normally you have the epileptogenic zone. So, here it starts in the right uh, hippocampus, mm -hmm. as I uh, specified earlier. And uh, start also in the uh, left uh, hemisphere mm -hmm. and then propagates in the temporal pole and the parahippocampal regions. So yeah. And all the other regions are in rest state. Oh, no. <laughs> it just to be just just put this. Two line. Yeah, two line. And the show that. Okay, this. Okay, and if you see um, the time series is a four dimensions. So the first dimension is for uh, the time. Uh, the second uh, is the number or uh, is the number of state variables. So normally we have six, but uh, I will just show you. Um, okay. So normally, uh, the, so the model has, has uh, six state variables. But in the monitor, um, it's interesting. Um, <coughs> Okay, no. Um. 
Okay. So in the model, you have six state variables. But I specify for the variable of interest what I want to uh, see. If you remember, it's a combination of the variable uh, x2 and x1 who uh, looks like the LFP of the ep epileptic seizures or the epileptic activity. So I specify, uh, not specify, but it was specified already in the model that uh, the output is x2 minus x1. And the second is z. So here, the four <coughs> dimensions correspond to first the time, the second is the number, it's the number of variable of interest. So I'm looking the first one. Then it's the number of regions. And the last one is for the mode. But we didn't really see, uh, we didn't see the, any models that use it. So it's, we just put to zero. <coughs> Someone has an output or something, a plot? Yeah? Did you plot the whole timeline? Or did you follow? Uh, put everything, but we can. So how long did you simulate again? Uh, we, you can reduce. Maybe so it depends on the computer. Because, for example, for mind text, it took less than two minutes. So it really depends on the <laughs> performance of the computer. Maybe you can reduce uh, the simulation length if it's too long. Normal activity. No. Normal activity. Uh, no. <laughs> oh. That's interesting. What is it? So, um, is there something that you can say that affects if it spreads to other regions or not? What do you? Like, is it conform of epilepsy if it spreads, or is it the same form just? Uh, there is a. Uh, 
uh, the connectivity, uh, so some patients have some lesions, uh, other doesn't have lesions, but you, you have epilepsy, you are, you're displaying epilepsy. Uh, you have different type of epilepsy, it can be frontal, uh, temporal, and everything. And generally, so it's what I show, it was, it's a large scale network, because it starts somewhere and propagates to other regions. <coughs> Regions. Not sometimes it propagates to some region, then it dies there, and then yeah. it's back to normal again. But that's kind of it's not really. We don't know. It's really individual. Questions left to the hands on session? Probably a lot, but uh, anything we can answer now? So I will uh, send you this uh, notebook, and uh, you will see that after there is uh, two other uh, steps. So here I just plot the, um, just zoom on the, uh, on the epileptogenic zone, but here is the SEEG, and you can see that the electrodes close to the epileptic zones receive a lot of information, but depending on the distance, you see you receive more or less information. Uh, we can simulate a surgical resection. So we are just uh, cutting some connections in the structural connectome of the patients. And we relaunch the simulations. So here, OK. So what I have done is. Um, in surgery, what we want is to remove the epileptogenic zone. So where start the seizures? So here, what I have done is I remove, so I disconnect uh, the region that I set in the epileptogenic zone. But there's still the region that I set in the propagations. But I just remove the epileptogenic zone. And I want to see if by removing the epileptogenic zone, I can stop the seizures or not. So it's what we have done here. And I simulate, and we see that we see the intellectual spikes, but there are no seizures anymore. Do we have reliable health screen for now? What's the reliability like right now? Have we, uh, in Marcel, did you uh, like use this and predict uh, the outcome of the surgery sometime? Uh, there is. Uh, there's uh, some ongoing work also from uh, uh, just uh, disconnect the... Um, so instead to remove a, uh, a part of the brain, just disconnect, just cut the links and uh, see if we can optimize, so cut the less of links, uh, the less links possible and uh, get seizure free. So there, like it's a gamma knife or, and it's done in... Uh, Toronto, I think. No, Cleveland. I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and after, uh, so we have cut the epileto uh, epileptogenic zone. And here I will just stimulate the, the region that I've set at the beginning at the propagation zone. So we just see before that when I remove the epileptogenic zone, there is no seizures anymore. What happens if I stimulate uh, these regions these two regions that were uh, in the propagations. So I build a stimulus. I can define the patterns, okay? And here I just reset my model, the simulators, run the simulations, and here my, the regions uh, are uh, excited and generate seizures, but not par by themselves. You have to push them. Okay, and it's finished. Thank you.